and then I think I was thinking the other day I made the on the on the previous podcast I spoke about how Conor McGregor had been spotted in Rome, Italy, walking around, enjoying the sights and sounds, taste and whatnot, soaking it all in, going to Gucci with his missus, you know, surrounded by, you know, four really, or five, I think maybe big, burly security guards, right? And the Daily Mail article that I kind of reported it on had basically framed it in a way that how, oh, look at this big, bad UFC fighter who needs to have all these security guards to protect him from shoppers in the middle of Rome. And that's how they basically framed it. And I was like, mm, I think the Daily Mail's bit off here what's actually the true the true interpretation of that of that scene is that those security guards are there to protect the crowd from connor not the other way around right because obviously he's a flipping ufc fight he can legitimately beat up most people on the face of this earth but he is also incredibly unhinged this version of connor mcgregor he has for whatever reason decided that anybody outside of the octagon that kind of speaks to him in a certain manner is going to get these hands it's going to get these feet it's going to get stools it's going to get dollies it's going to get many things right flung at them and it seems like the other day in Rome was no exception because as a follow-up to that shopping trip, look at this on TMZ. Conor McGregor allegedly attacks a DJ in Rome, a punch to the face and a broken nose. Now, I stumbled across this guy's video talking about the thing on social. I didn't really think much of it. I thought it was whatever. Then as the video goes, it's all obviously it's, in, it's silent. I'm just kind of browsing, just looking at it as I kind of hover. He's wiggled his nose and it's clearly the cartilage here is gone. If you've broken your nose before, you would know. And I'm like, damn, he's got an actual broken nose. I put the sound on and I think fuck and I listen and it's like yeah it's Conor McGregor did this and I'm like oh my days and if I remember from the clip he says something along the lines of oh he was leaving and somebody in a group says something to Conor he misheard it and he said yeah let's go and then you know he got a punch in the face and he flew and as he woke up as he got up you know he realized his nose was broken it's like god almighty what an absolute psycho so courtesy of, let's just read the article before we read the update. So it says here, Conor McGregor allegedly got into a fight outside of an octagon. This time, <laughs> another fight with a DJ claimed to have punched him in the face and broke his nose. Francis, Francesco Facianti, 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 Francisco Facianetti. Francianetti, right? Francianetti, that you say? Francesco Francianetti. A famous DJ from Italy says he and his wife were hanging out with Connor and his fiance in Rome. And at around 2 a.m. on Sunday, Connor threw a punch landing on his face. Francianetti says the attack was unprovoked. So they actually, okay, this is what makes it even more weird because I've heard that he was just a DJ in the club. So they were together for the majority of the day early, into the early mornings. Um, I'd assume they were known to each other because how are you just going to meet random couples and just have drinks until the early hour? I don't know. Maybe they move different. But to get to that hour of the night and then punch him in the face is mad. Uh, Fashionetti was posted a video that clearly shows the injury, says that they were all having fun early in the evening, so much so Conor invited them back to tag along to another party. It appears they didn't leave because Fashionetti says that the, well, that's when Conor threw the punch in front of 10 witnesses. Um, the DJ says he was quick to he's quick to say he's suing Connor. He says I took a punch from nothing. That punch could go to anyone, my friends, my wife, other people. That's why I decided to sue Connor because he's a violent and dangerous person. So now he's getting sued by this DJ. Now what's the interpretation of it the patricia's wife posted what she claims went down she says then out of nowhere he threw a punch in the face of francesco he was inviting us to another party francesco says okay let's go he hit him luckily francesco was very close so he couldn't load any of his punches francesco flew back flew on the table and then on the ground the first thing i came to mind was you're kidding is this a show then i was paralyzed um, she then went on to say, I turned around and saw that his friends were holding him against the wall because he wanted to continue beating him. <laughs> Imagine, Connor wanted to continue pummeling this guy who was probably dressed head to toe in Marcelo Berlon. He probably had a couple bits of, um, you know, uh, Circo Loco merch on, maybe those Burberry um oh no Burberry those um Alexander McQueen Stan Smith ones thing stacked away maybe a couple of maybe yeah, some Balenciaga sock trainers on just a casual Italian dude right Italian DJ guy you know how they are right they're fucking nice people the nicest people right they know how to party know how to eat know how to have a good time um know how to live the high life and if you're someone like a Connor they will legitimately show you around and show you one of the some of the best parts of Rome right they'll tell you, take you to all the places that tourists don't get to go to all the glitzy glamoury places that you actually have a swell time so i can't even imagine what that person could have done or said that could have got him to that point 
<laughs> but he had to be held back, right? Then I then they then they took him away. Um, I turned to the f light. I turned on the light, and the guards turned them off. Of course, so no one would see no one's video. Francesco was bleeding. I went to help him, and the guards chased us away. Um, he will stay in Italy until October twenty sixth. If you see him, stay away from him. <laughs> Do not go near him and ask for autographs because he is unstable and a dangerous person. Connor's had numerous incidents. Now let's hypothesize about what happened, right? Because to be completely honest, I've watched too many public freakout videos. I'm obsessed with that subreddit. It's one of the best in the world, uh, public freakouts, right? And I know people love to kind of frame stuff that happens to them in a way that always makes them out to be the victim, right? It's just a standard thing that the people always do in these kind of instances. So they'll, you know, they'll start an argument with somebody. They'll say some really horrible things to that person. They might even physically attack them. And then the moment that person tries to retaliate, that's when they start to record. So then when we see it on video, so when we see it on social media, it always looks like that person who's recording is a damsel in distress. Oh my God, I can't believe you hit me unprovoked, but then you didn't see the other half of the video where that person insulted that person's child spat in their face did something that would obviously provoke them to the point to get to that you know to that level of anger or that level of physical violence or whatnot so for connor to be with these people from the early evenings from the evening to the early hours of the morning to invite them back to another party somewhere with his wife right because i imagine you know to get connor to go somewhere is probably easy but when he's with his missus he's probably a little bit protective about who's around and whatnot cool so he invites them back. They're probably going to, you know, do do a couple bumps off a nice marble table somewhere. So all good. No no shame in the game that way. So for him to get to that point, and then I think they said they were leaving. So they're on their way out and then get to punch him in the face. Something happened in between. So I'm hypothesizing that maybe at the dinner table, this guy was getting lippy, saying some things that, you know, Connor didn't take well. And maybe in his kind of the language barrier thing existed where they didn't really understand each other. And maybe Connor was like, yeah, all right, cool, let's go. Let's go outside then or something like that, right? And then the guy went outside, yeah, let's go. And then Connor thought, oh, you want to go? And then he punched him in the face. Do you know what I mean? That's what I'm interpreting it. Like some, he said something to Connor on the table that he didn't like. And then in that exchange, he offered him outside. The guy interpreted it as we're going to the next party and then he got dicks in the face. That's what I think. Because I can't imagine somebody inviting you to an afters and then you're, he's telling you, yeah, it's that way. And then you elbow them in the face or then you guillotine them. It doesn't make sense, Jeremy. You know I mean? <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> so out of order. So I don't think that's the case. I think something definitely happened that would have provoked him to that point. I would hope so. Because I don't want to imagine him just kind of wailing on people on this unprovoked. Because even that fight with the old guy in the in the bar, in the pub. Yeah, he shouldn't have done it, of course. But the guy did say they did get in a, in a verbal altercation, right? Whether it was because of the whiskey or whatnot, what story you believe, but they did get into an argument. It wasn't like he was just sitting there minding his business and then he just punched him in the back of the head. Obviously, that was a cowardly part of it, but they did have a, a argument. That's what kind of led to the fight. So I'm sure something happened, I'm sure. But let's read the update anyway from TMZ. It says here, the St. Georges in Rome, where the alleged incident went down, tells TMZ Sport they're investigating the incident and they intend to comply with the cops. We will offer them full support in this investigation. The safety of the security of our guests and employees is our first priority. Yo, I don't know what's going on with Conor, man. I really don't. I, I asked a question the other day on my socials. It's Conor McGregor the black John Jones or is John Jones the black Conor McGregor? Because these two guys are doing everything they can outside of the octagon to kind of jeopardize their legacy um, in the sport. They don't seem to care that much and they seem to be very unhinged more so in public than it seems to be in the in the octagon which is really strange isn't it you would think you'd be a little bit more reckless and a little bit more wild and animalistic in the octagon because you kind of have to turn that on in your head to fight another guy in your underwear in a cage but it seems like when they go outdoors and they're surrounded by civilians who they could probably kill with their bare hands they decide to still keep that switch on or it's if anything turn it up a notch which is to me very very odd but hey you know you know i don't know what pressures he's dealing with again like i said it's probably more to a story that meets the eye i would imagine so because it just sounds so unreasonable it just sounds so weird do you know what i mean it really does but hey what can you do